Hello friends and welcome to the ninth part of this series to create a chat app using Flutterflow and Superbase. In this episode, we'll be implementing the functionality to create a new group or a new contact as well. So let's get right into it now. Alright, so first let's deal with the uploading of the group profile picture. So this is very similar to setting up the profile picture in the user profile when the user sets up his or her profile. It's the exact same steps. So you can either refer back to the video or you can follow along right now. Or you can even try it out on your own before you watch this tutorial. Alright, so now I'm just going to explain again how to set up this group profile picture. So first, in your Superbase dashboard, you go under storage. And under storage, now let's add a new bucket. And this bucket will be chats. We'll make it a public bucket. And then we'll create a new folder and this folder will be called chat profile pictures. Under policies, we also have to create a new policy for the chats bucket over here. The policy name will just allow full access. And for the allowed operations, we'll select all four of these over here. And we'll just click on review and we'll click on save policy. Now we can go back to our Flutterflow dashboard and we can click on the circle image and we can go to the action flow editor and whenever the user taps on it, we will search for the upload action and we want to choose this upload or save media. Upload type will be Superbase, for the bucket name it will be chats and for the upload photo path it will be chat profile pictures. For the media source, it can be camera or gallery, and we don't want to allow video. And for the name, it'll be upload data to BE. So next, with the circle image still selected, we'll go to properties, and for the path, we'll change this to the widget state, and we'll choose the uploaded file URL. We can also give it a default variable which we will get from our setup page. It will be this default variable over here. And so we'll just copy and paste that default image into our default variable value. You can't see it now, but in the test mode, you'll be able to see it. And now let's add a form field for the group name and group description so that we ensure that they are not now. So with the column selected, we'll right click on it and we'll wrap the column widget inside a form validation. And for the form validation, we want to only validate the group name as well as the group description field. So we'll make sure that those two are not empty. And now we can move on to the search users text field. Now for the search users text field, we want the user to be able to search for new members to add to their group chat based on the user's phone number in this user data table over here. So how we can do that is that we have to add an API call in our Flutterflow apps. So on the right hand side over here, we'll go to API calls and we we'll want to add an API call We'll create an API call and for this API call name, we'll just name it as search users. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. For the API URL, we'll have to go back to our Superbase dashboard. And when we scroll down on the left over here, we have to go to API docs. And we'll choose our user data table. We can scroll down all the way until we reach filtering over here and on the top right hand side over here we want to select bash so under filtering we want to copy this part over here under code make sure to not include the open and close inverted commas so we'll copy that and we'll paste it in our api url 
So just a quick explanation of the API URL. This part is unique to your own Superbase project and is what allows Flutterflow to identify your Superbase project. This part over here is your table name that you are filtering based on. In this case, we are searching within our user data table over here. And now this is what we have to change. So instead of ID equals to EQ.1, we want to search for phone number equals to I like dot asterisk open square bracket close square bracket and asterisk and inside the open and close square brackets you want to type search string and under this variable tab over here we want to add a variable called search string as for the type it will be of type string and we also add, want to add an n percent sign and we want to type uid equals to not dot eq dot open square bracket user id and close square bracket you want to add another variable which is the user id and this will also be of type string so basically what this api call does is that the user is able to enter a search string in our search input text field and it searches the user data table for any number that matches the search string over here. However, we do not want the user to be able to search for his own data and add himself or herself to the chat. So we have to add this additional condition over here, which is to ensure that that does not happen. So it will not return rows in the user data table where the UID is equal to our user ID or the authenticated or the authenticated user's ID. So after that, we can just press add call. Now we go back to our widget tree. With the search users text field selected, we'll add an action. And on the on change event, we'll add an action. And now we'll search API. And you want to choose this API call action. For this, we'll search We'll choose the search users API call that we just made and for the variables for the search string it will be widget state and it will be the search users text field and for the last variable the user ID this will be the authenticated users user ID we can just remove this for now Now we can close this over here. And now with our list view selected, we want to click on generate dynamic children. For the variable name, it can just be searched users. And for the value, we want to choose action outputs. And we want to choose the action output from our API response. It will be a JSON body and we'll click on no for the changes. And then we'll click on save and we'll click on OK. Let's just limit how large this container is. So with the container selected, let's choose a height of 180 pixels. So now let's just change the circle image in the list view. And instead of this path over here, it'll be the searched users item. And it'll be a JSON path. And the path will be dot profile image path. Basically, this JSON path will be a dollar sign dot our column name over here. I will click on confirm. 
Now for this text over here, instead of hello world, it will be the search users items and we'll click on JSON path and it will also be dot and whatever name is over here, the name of the column over here, which is name. So it will be dollar sign dot name. So now our list tiles over here should reflect whatever we searched over here. And now for the checkbox, let's just change the checkbox initial value to unchecked at first. So now we have to go to create a group. But before we create a group, we have to go back to our Superbase table editor. We have to create a new table. And for this table name, it'll be table name chats. We want to disable role level security for now. And we need to add some columns as well. So the first column that we have to add is the chat name, of course. And this will be of type text. The next column that we have to add is the chat description. This will also be of type text. And the next column that we want to add is the chat image. And this will also be of type text. And the following column that we have to add is the chat members. And for this, it will be a and for this it will be an array of UIDs of the members currently inside the chat. So over here we have to select define as array. And we also have to add the last message of the chat so that we can display it in our app. This will also be of text type. And lastly, we have to add a last message time. And for this, it will be a timestamp Z. So we can click on save now. And now that we have created our chats table, we can go back to our Flutterflow project and since we just added a new table inside our Superbase dashboard, we have to go to Settings and Integrations. And under Superbase, we have to get Schema once more. Now we can go back to our widget tree. And we can select the Create Group button over here. And we can open the Action Flow Editor. We can search for Superbase and we can insert a row. And for the table, we'll choose the Chat table. And now for the fields, we have to add a field. And the first field that we want to change is the chat name field. For this value, it'll be the widget state and it will be the group name text field. Next, it will be the chat description. So, and for the chat description value, it'll be under widget state and it will be the group description text field over here. Next, we want to add the chat image and this chat image path will be under our widget state and uploaded file URL. Next, it will be the chat members. And since this is a list of strings of all the UIDs of the currently added chat members, we have to create a new code expression and we have to add two arguments. The first argument will be the user's own UID. So the value will be the authenticated user's user ID. And the second variable will be a list of all the selected chat members UID. So for this, it will be a list of string. For the value, this will be the widget state and we can choose the checked items. For available options, we will choose the map list items. And under items in list, we have to choose the JSON path. And for this JSON path, it will be dot UID since we want to only select the UID over here. 
so we can click on confirm and we'll click on confirm for all of them and now under this expression over here we want to type in chat member uid plus square brackets uid and we can check errors and now there's no errors over here so we can just hit on confirm and that's all we have to do to insert the data of our newly created chat into our chats table over here in Superbase. So we can click on close. And now let's just try testing out our create new group bottom sheet over here. So we can just go into test mode now. One eternity later. All right, so test mode is just loaded up. Let's try clicking on the plus icon and we'll create a new group. Hmm. As you can see that there is some error over here and there is also an overflow error over here. But don't worry, we'll be fixing these in the next episode as this episode is already quite long. So let's just do, let's just test our upload photo functionality. We can go to our gallery and we can choose our photo to update. So we chose that Google icon. We can also enter a group name and a group description as well. If we try to search for some members, let's see what happens. We also get an error over here. All right, but don't worry, we'll fix that in the next episode. All right, so thank you all for watching. Even though we didn't really get the search function to work over here, I hope that this shows that in app development, nothing is straightforward. You'll always run into errors. So in the next video, stay tuned for the next video where we will try to debug these errors. And I'll show you the process that I go through when debugging errors such as this one over here. Alright, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you and goodbye.